Hello, and welcome to the online edition of Night Watch for August 2024. My name is Bill, coming to you from the Sudicum Planetarium here at Adventure Science Center in Nashville. And as always, we'll begin with the moon phases this month. We find the moon will be new on the 4th, first quarter moon on the 12th, full moon on the 19th, followed by last quarter on the 26th. Looking at planets, Saturn is now moving into our later evening sky, rising at around 11 p.m. in the southeast early in August, but by 9 p.m. at the end of the month. The waning gibbous moon will be passing by the planet Saturn on the evening and early morning of the 20th into the 21st, rising at around 9 p.m. Mars and Jupiter continue to reside in the morning sky, rising in the eastern sky before sunrise. They'll be rising around 1.30 a.m. for much of the month, and early in the month, Jupiter will be below the planet Mars in the constellation Taurus the Bull, but will be passing by and moving above the planet Mars by the end of the month. Watch for a close conjunction of these two planets between August 12th and 16th, and they will be at their closest on the early morning of August 14th. See the beautiful thin crescent moon passing by Jupiter and Mars on the 27th and 28th of August. Looking at constellations in our evening sky at around 9 p.m., High in the sky, nearly overhead, we do have the constellations Lyra the Harp, Cygnus the Swan, and Aquila the Eagle. Their bright stars, which are known as Vega, Deneb, and Altair, form what we usually refer to as the Summer Triangle. Down in the southern part of the sky, you will see the constellations Scorpius the Scorpion and Sagittarius the Archer. Now, to see the sky at its best, you do want to get far, far away from city lights. And here we see what the sky looks like in places like Nashville. We turn on so many lights in the city and surrounding suburbs that the sky never really gets totally dark at night. In fact, it's so bright that we can't see many stars at all. But if you can get far, far away from those city lights, then you can see many, many more stars, including the hazy band of light that we refer to as the Milky Way, arcing across our late summer skies. We have an interesting story that's been getting some press this summer, and you may have seen these stories about a nova appearing in the sky this summer. Some of them are quite exaggerated. However, beware of these exaggerated stories online about a bright new star appearing in the night sky this summer. This nova is a recurring nova, which occurs about every 80 years. So we know it, it's about to happen, and we are expecting it to happen this summer. But don't confuse a nova with a supernova, which is the final titanic explosion that destroys some dying stars. This nova involves a double star system, where a giant red star is close enough to a white dwarf star where they're orbiting each other. And hydrogen gas from the giant star is being poured onto and building up around the denser dwarf star due to gravity. After about 80 years or so, this gas ignites in a thermonuclear explosion that blows the built-up gas away in a very, very bright explosion. The smaller star briefly becomes bright enough to be seen in our sky for just under a week. This one was first noticed in the year 1217, and the last time it blew was back in 1946. And again, we are expecting it to happen this year, as all indications are that the gas has reached the point where it's going to blow. So the next outburst is expected this year between now and September. We don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but we do believe it's going to be this summer between now and September. The star will be in our sky at about the same brightness as the star Polaris, or the North Star, which of course is not the brightest star in the sky, no matter what anyone else might tell you. We see here a close-up of the area of the sky of the constellations Corona Borealis next to Buotis the Herdsman. The faint constellation is hard to see in light polluted areas such as Nashville, so you want to get far away from city lights to see this faint constellation which looks like a smiley face or a letter U shape right next to the constellation Buotes. Now normally you wouldn't see this star at all. Even if you're far away from city lights, you need a big telescope to see this star. 
However, when the nova happens, it will be appearing simply as a new star in the sky as shown here. Look carefully as we blink it on and off so you can see where this new star will appear in the constellation Corona the Crown. Again, this will only be lasting for about a week or less and we don't know exactly when it's going to happen and when the star will brighten. But again, it is expected between now and September. So go outside each clear night and see if you can find Corona Borealis and see if you notice anything brighter in that part of the sky. Because when this star does appear, it will be brighter than the stars of the constellation, but not even as bright as the star Arcturus, the bright orange colored star in Buotis. Check reputable online science websites that don't have sensationalized stories to find out when this nova actually does occur. A good one is a one-page website that's updated every day by astronomers, and that is spaceweather.com. One of the highlights this month is the annual Perseid meteor shower, which occurs uh, between August 11th and 15th, peaking on the early morning of August 13th. Anywhere between 60 to possibly 120 or more meteors per hour will be visible if you can get far, far away from city lights where the skies are much darker. In city areas like Nashville, you might only see 20 to 30 meteors per hour. The meteors emanate from the constellation Perseus that rises in the northeastern sky at around 11 p.m. The meteors are best seen between about 11 p.m. and early morning twilight with the best hours being between about 2 and 4 a.m. The meteors will streak across the sky, but when traced back, they will intersect the constellation Perseus, hence their name, the Perseid Meteor Shower. This year, the waxing moon will not interfere with the meteor shower as it will be setting before the late night and early morning hours, so no bright moonlight will interfere with the meteor shower this year. Now, the best way to view the annual Perseid meteor shower is to get as far away as you can from city lights. No telescopes or binoculars are needed. Just a lawn chair and a good view of as much of the sky as possible is all you need, as well as some patience. During the meteor shower, notice yellowish Saturn in the southern part of the sky and the beautiful conjunction of Jupiter and Mars rising up over in the eastern sky during the peak of the meteor shower. Now the meteors are actually tiny bits of rock in space that are entering the Earth's atmosphere. They range in size from about the size of a grain of sand up to maybe a small pea. And they are burning up in the Earth's upper atmosphere due to friction as they are moving at about 36 to 37 miles per second. So they burn up completely, so no worries about any meteors falling out of the sky. Many like to enjoy this meteor shower due to the warm weather of August, the only issue this year is the peak is on a Tuesday morning. Now don't forget, if you can't remember everything I've mentioned in this online edition of Nightwatch, you can go online and grab a copy of our star chart as well as other information at adventuresci.org slash starcharts. And also, don't forget to visit us here at the Adventure Science Center and the Pseudicum Planetarium for our various programs throughout the month. And please note that the Pseudicum Planetarium will be closed August 19th through the 30th for some amazing system upgrades. We'll have new computers, upgraded software, and a new video projection system using the latest technology, which will bring you a spectacular view on our beautiful dome. Also, for those wondering, Laser Shows will be returning next month on September 14th with Laser David Bowie, Laser Prince, and our all-new Laser ELO featuring the music of the Electric Light Orchestra. We hope you can join us here at the Science Center where our mission is to open every mind to the wonders of science and technology, fostering a better understanding of ourselves and the world around us. And until next time, I wish you clear skies.